Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new SPSM chat. SPSM 3.0. I don't know why I still have a hard time with this. I'm Rudy Caceres, at Rudy Caceres, on Twitter, and we got a special show for you. Um, all the other ones, that was just that was just practice. That was just beta testing. This is the real main event. It goes downhill from here. Uh, sorry, future guests. <laughs> But I got Desiree Al stage, Jess Stolman Rainey up in this bitch, and we're gonna critique Suicide Prevention Month. If you're watching us live, please let us know that you're here. Shout out to Krista Marie, who is our fearless moderator, who hopefully has pinned this to the uh, top of the SPSM chat account, twitter.com slash SPSM chat. Please let us know that you're here. We got some cool questions. Introduce yourselves in the Twitter chat. I will be uh, checking in on you uh, every now and then. I see everything and I do mean everything. That's creepy. It is creepy. So without further ado, let's uh, run the gamut. Let's get to um, everyone and make sure that we all get seen. Right here, we got Joelle Marie, we have Mental Strategy, <laughs> Hudson Harris, Danielle, and then our two guests, but let's let them introduce themselves. First and foremost, let's go to Joelle. Hi, my name is Joelle Marie. I am a peer specialist and a mental health consultant, and um, I am autistic, I'm bipolar, and I have OCD, and I definitely have a vested interest in suicide prevention. Danielle Glick. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Danielle. I am a child and family therapist. I'm getting my second master's right now in substance abuse counseling. I, I am a person who lives with PTSD. I am an attempt survivor, a loss survivor, and let's talk suicide. Hudson. Hello, everyone. My name is Hudson Harris. I am mainly here because I have a piglet named Hamlet. I'm reasonably certain that's the only reason that anybody on SPSM wants me here. Uh, but when I'm not taking care of Hamlet, I am working on mental health system design, uh, how to design better products uh, supporting behavioral health, and I love to social media and Twitter things. Okay, and our guest of the week, let's just uh, do it this way. Tell the whole world, the whole SBSM chat, universe, galaxy, spear, Coventry, who is Jessere L. Stolman? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we didn't need a combined name. <laughs> uh, how long did you work on that? Because I feel like that didn't really get my peer review for that. <laughs> that I at least got it right the first time, unlike the, uh, the OPP joke last week. Um, um, okay. Okay. Right. okay. Hey, if we do, I mean, we could be Jessaray L. Rage, and that would be. Oh, yeah, great. let's do that. That's more okay. appropriate. Well, that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, Desiree, just uh, talk. Say oh, something. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm Desiree Stage. Uh, I run Live Through This, which is a series of portraits and true stories of suicide attempt survivors across the United States. My dog is doing something weird. Um, that's Dolly Parton. What was I saying? Oh, I'm an attempt survivor. I'm a lost survivor. I was a bystander to a suicide. Um, I, I have an interest in suicide also. <laughs> you are one of the OGs of SPSM chat. Do you remember your first SPSM chat? Uh, yeah, it was in like 2014. Okay. Yeah. That's You're awesome. still on the website. <laughs> Can we get a shot of the website? Because it still has your face from 2014 on there. Like, oh, don't get me started on that. Like, oh, I, we man. can't even change that. Okay, Jess, go on. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Jess, and I uh, work in Colorado for our um, statewide peer support and crisis line. Um, we also do contract lines for all kinds of other crisis work, so not just um, suicide related, and we run the lifeline for Colorado. And um, I also have an interest in suicide. Um, I'm a suicide attempt survivor and a law survivor and have witnessed some suicides. And, um, you know, I'm interested in it as a topic, I guess. And um, I'm really interested in activist work around um, making sure that when we're doing suicide prevention work that our ethics include uh, valuing people's um, agency and voice and choice. And uh, I don't think that that's what happens right now. So. 
you know, beefs, uh, which I'm sure we'll be getting to. Are we yes. going to get to do the beef corner beef? I think this whole thing is beef corner, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. If, if we ever if we ever lose the, the naming rights to SPSM, we're going to call it that, okay? Corner no, beef. So, of course. <laughs> um, also, we run a podcast called Thank Sometimes. You. Oh, right. yeah. We'll talk podcast. about that. I forgot. <laughs> well, that's been yeah. SPSM chat, everyone. We'll see you. <laughs> Keep your pigs close. The beef. <laughs> so, um, Daz and I were just texting about things we don't like. Um, and then we were like, we should have a podcast. And Daz was like, I've been trying to have a podcast. And um, so then three days later, we did one. Um, and I think people like it and it's fun for us it's called suicide and stuff. And we talk about suicide and stuff. Um, and <laughs> we have a 20 minute section of the podcast that's called beef corner, where we talk about things we don't like, um, which is really fun for us because we're haters. <laughs> is that, is that a good description, Desiree? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, cool, cool, cool. Before we get I, uh, into, yes, Desiree. Oh, I was just going to say the fun thing about it for me was that I came up with the idea during a panic attack. And then I was like, well, let's just do this. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. A logical imperative to do things better. This, all this mental <laughs> illness has to help us somehow. Um, yeah. We'll, and then, we'll, you we'll know, the beef corner we have graphics for and stuff now. And that just sort of uh, evolved from some comments on the you Facebook need a live. You Is need there an actual beef, beef like graphic? There is a beef graphic. <laughs> <laughs> a you need a button. Like a, one of those things that anxiety has, like the buttons that you push that does the things and makes sounds. You need that for like wah, wah. So yeah, that's all yeah. like episode 10. <laughs> yeah, we're just working on our basic tech right now, like not having feedback and stuff. Dude. So. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's get to let's get to the Twitter chat to make sure we can give some <laughs> shout outs. Um, this way, everyone feels welcome. Hey, how you doing? Hey, everyone. Resident British insomniac, writer, attempt survivor, agitator, suspicious of many things, including suicide prevention month. Sounds like your kind of person, Jess. <laughs> Hey, Joel, how are you doing? Hey, Desiree, it's very important. Oh my God, like you are like, like uh, omniscient, Desiree. You're like doing like two things at the same time. It's good level setting. Oh, great. Um, Krista says, hey everyone, I'm Krista. I'm the moderator for SPSM chat. The product manager would add at least your trust in SP. I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's in human services from SC University with plan to, okay, cool. No, but seriously, thank you so much, Krista. Jesus Christ, like, how do you do all this, Desiree, at the same time? Um, yeah, I got skills, girl. Can we can we give it up for Leah Harris? Yes. How amazing yeah. is she? Yeah. She's good. Fangirl of Desiree. Yes. <laughs> and, and uh, hey, Em, how are you doing? Um, anyone else with us? If you're just lurking, that's totally fine as well. That's what I did for like a year and a half. So let's get to, um, actually, we have, we have a couple minutes. So... If any of you, uh, Danielle, Hudson, Joelle, have questions for Jess or Ray, this now is the time. We have a couple minutes before our first question pops up in the tweet chat. I didn't think we'd have any time. Um, <laughs> geez, because there's six of us. Awesome, wow. guys. I, so I love this. <laughs> oh, we don't have time when there's four of us. Um, um, nice job filling that silence, everybody. Okay, what, uh, so what, what are you drinking, Desiree? Is that coffee? That seems late for coffee. Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, okay, what's everybody drinking right now? If you're drinking anything, water, mandarin orange seltzer. Got Doc some Holiday. Baby food here too, if you want that. <laughs> Ooh, awesome. I, uh, Is that split pea? No, oh. it's chicken soup or some great oh. shit. Oh, I, okay. I have a seltzer okay. with CBD in it because my back is messed up. I feel like I feel like it's like bad back season right now. Yeah, it is for yep, me. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a bug know, going around. You want to know something weird about baby formula? You know what happens to baby formula that doesn't meet the cut? Talk about baby food. Follow me for a second. You know what happens to baby formula that doesn't pass inspection? They turn it into the shredded cheese we buy at the store. So well, I did say that's that. why I, I get slices. Question, but I think we got to move. On. Okay, so question number one. <laughs> we filled the space. We filled the space. That's fine. Yes. 
Thank you. Thank you for that, Hudson. <laughs> Question number one, what are your issues with Suicide Prevention Month? And we'll go around again. If you're watching this um, on the Twitter chat, if you're participating in the Twitter chat, uh, you know how it goes. But if it's your first time, um, just reply with this. Reply to the tweet. The, the tweet's already on there. Let me Actually, let me just sh show it on there right now, just so we're all on the same page. So here we go. Here's the tweet. And reply with A1, either on your own account or just reply to this tweet to make it easier. Make sure to use hashtag SPSM. That way we can um, watch it on the screen and give you shout outs, whether you like it or not. So let's go to our first guest, Jess Stolman Rainey. I didn't expect issues? to be first. So, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, what are my issues? That's such a big question. I um, spent a lot of time trying to write an answer to this and... It's three pages long, so I'm not going to do all of that. Um, but I think that my biggest issue is that the focus is on this idea of prevention that is really, really ill-defined. Like, we don't even know consistently, like, what it would actually mean to prevent suicide. And so what that en means ends up happening is that um, we sort of drive everyone to a couple of different types of intervention all of which have this endpoint that could involve like incarceration, psychiatric incarceration, or law enforcement involvement. And um, that's not really a solution to people's pain. And it seems like the focus of Suicide Prevention Month is really not, not about um, any of that, not about helping people who are suicidal so much as um, like advertising the field. Bonus question, Jess, why is incarceration slash institutionalization uh, not helpful? Well, people want to kill themselves more afterwards, um, so that's not helpful. Um, and there's some, some evidence that that might be the case. Um, and um, I think it doesn't even matter if it's an intervention that works for people, because it's not okay to take people's rights away just because it might be something that works for them. Like, we can do better. We have, don't have to keep doing the same thing for hundreds of years just because that's what we've done before. And we're scared to try something new. Like, that's just fuckery. Sorry. Am I allowed to say fuckery on here? Yes, you're allowed to say fuckery. <laughs> okay, good. Everyone get that? We're saying fuckery on SPSM chat. 3.0. Let's get to Des. What's your issues with Suicide Prevention Month? All, I, all of them. I... I want to abolish September. I'm fucking over it. Um, yeah, right now my biggest issue is burnout. When we did our, I think it was our first or second episode of Suicide and Stuff at the beginning of the month, I was like, oh, I'm avoiding burnout. This is fine. I'm doing what I want. No, I hate it. I'm done. I'm done. I don't even have words anymore because I'm just over fucking Suicide Prevention Month right now what what's 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 going on like why is it bad uh, i'm tired the constant pressure to um create content and respond to the media and be in one million places at once um it's just a lot and i've been traveling for like two weeks i've been away from my routines which i need um and my babies and my wife and then i came home and I got one of those fucking daycare colds, and now I feel like shit on top of being exhausted, and I hate it all. So you should probably just move on. Okay, so let's go to Hudson, and then we'll go to Danielle, and we'll go to Joelle, so stay ready. <laughs> Mental strategy. Yes. Um, how do I feel about it? Actually, I think Jess, I, I mean, I have, I have several like things I'd like to change about it. Um, I think Jess really hit, it, hit the nail on the head for me, which is like this idea that like we're really good at raising money, we're really good at talking about things, but when you get down to brass tacks of like <clears throat> what we're investing into suicide research, um, it's very little. Um, so, you know, I think it's one of those things where I think, what what are we trying to do? What are we trying to prevent? How are we trying to prevent it? Those to me are like really, really important questions. I mean, to the extent that it helps someone, that's great. Um, but for me, I wanna see the proof in the pudding, which means more research, more dollars from NIMH and NIH going towards you know, this public health crisis that nobody wants to research. Like, what does that research look like? I mean, last year, they earmarked $68 million for suicide-specific research. Um, 
and that was it. Like of the top ten leading causes of death in the United States, suicide is the only one that's still going up. Like every other one of them is going down. Like there's more money um, in really really obscure weird things than there is in suicide research. I mean, I think that research looks like uh, treating suicide like the public health crisis that it is. Um, working to grow the use of best practices so that people are getting the care that they're supposed to. Um, the one that always gets me is NIMH did a study, and I think, let's see, we're 19, so this would have been in 2017 was the study, 2018 it came out. Out of every adult patient receiving treatment for SMI, uh, one out of three received evidence-based treatment, which means that those are the people that were receiving like things rooted in science. And so I think that's some of the things that we have to start to try and fix and make more better yeah that's, that's, so like, wait, wait so like rooted in science too like that's a the standard for evidence based and suicide prevention is really freaking low too yes. like um uh, even getting an evidence-based treatment is kind of like oh well it made you like less likely to die but not yeah. less likely to be suicidal right yeah, I, I mean, I think so. Where I'm going with evidence based treatment is more on the side of like what we're doing in first response when people have a crisis and end up in the emergency department, mm -hmm. and then also on the therapeutic side. Um, I agree with you. There's not a whole lot, and the bar is really low. Like, I, I wrote a grant and talked a lot about how, like, there's a lot of consensus or expert consensus, but the concept of evidence based has eluded us. Yeah. Quite yet. <laughs> All right, let's get to Danielle. Um, my, I, it's like, how do I follow either of you when I agree with literally everything that you both have said? Not um, vigorously. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's what I was doing on this end. Um, but I do have a lot of beef with Suicide Prevention Month. I think that, first of all, it's bullshit that it even exists. We should be thinking about, talking about, and like just being suicide prevention aware every single day. There shouldn't be like a day or a week or a month where it's like the main focus and, and like you had brought up with like social media, we're really good at raising money, but who's actually out there doing the work. I've, I've stopped suicides from happening because of my line of work and I've sat with suicidal patients. And so uh, like how you brought up, we take away the rights. How the fuck does that make anything better? Um, but I've also like this, this year, it really triggered the hell out of me. I've been struggling with depression for the past couple of weeks. Um, based on how much talk there is about suicide all over the place, it's bringing up a lot of my own, you know, failed attempts and, and I've lost a lot of people to suicide. And so I think that one thing that's really, really obnoxious about this whole month is the fact that people don't really speak about it in a way that's um, appropriate often enough. I don't feel like anyone should have to censor themselves, but I do think that the like verbiage use needs to be um, more sensitive from certain people. Uh, that's my major beef with this stuff. Um, I don't need to log on to Facebook and see 55 people talking about jumping off bridges when my boyfriend jumped off a bridge. So it, it did like cross my mind several times over the past couple of weeks to delete my social media, uh, but I didn't do that. So I think it's just, I don't know. I hate, I hate this month too. I'm with all of you. Okay, let's go to Joelle, then we go to the Twitter chat, and then we will uh, go to question number two. Joelle. Um, I mean, I do think that, like a lot of other awareness kind of months, campaigns, you know, um, a lot of organizations want to put, like, the solution in sound bites and little graphics that have, like, these easy steps to follow, and it's bullshit. Um, we, can't, we can't just go one through five and, like, that solves this crisis issue with either a singular person or everyone in the world. And this whole, I'm sorry, but this whole like fucking like bag it and tag it mentality that people have where like you can encounter this person in crisis, label them and decide, yes, I need to call 911 is just dehumanizing and it's ridiculous and it's alienating and it's causing more harm. And some of the organizations I feel this year around are a little better in that they're introducing the idea of conversation and support. And actually some of them are not even mentioning call, call 911, which I think is great, but a lot of them still are. There's, you know, um, a lot of them still are saying like, that's the end game of your support is to call 911. And it's incredibly harmful and I hate it. Um, and, it also to have like a 
Suicide Prevention Month is to let people be performative for that month and then forget it and not um, work on all the other things that people need to not reach the point where they feel like suicide is the answer to their struggles. Let's go to the tweet chat and see what our, I think this is the most intelligent um, Twitter chat audience that exists in the whole world. <laughs> Um, hey Drew, I think you're you're new to SPSM 3.0, so I want to give you a special shout out. I am a crisis text line counselor and teen mental health first aider. Excited to be here. Ooh, that's, that sounds like a future subject right there. Um, Desiree with her bad back, and Lena probably has one too. Um, M is a CTL volunteer. Okay, cool. Um, hey Drew. Uh, Leah, what she has to say is suicide prevention is pretty much the stepchild of mental health, which is also a pretty failed paradigm. Our outcomes are terrible, and there is frighteningly little self-reflection on that front. Hashtag SPSM. <laughs> Danielle says fuckery is my new favorite word. <laughs> um, if it may be pity, if it focuses on preventing suicide attempts rather than preventing suicidality and the reasons why people get to that position, this is merely the tip of the iceberg of my issue with it. Um, we're, we're just bad backs all the way around. Um, M says, y'all, I don't even know where to start. Why only talk about it for a month? Why focus only on prevention? Well, that's what we do at SPSM Chat. We talk about it every single week, Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time. Um, Leia says, it's not even for me the issue with the month, um, uh, but what it represents on many levels. Okay, so I love all the comments here. We got to move on, but... Um, Oh, Rattle the Stars. Halo, Rattle the Stars. There are so many problems with evidence-based programs. Most are just terrible because the process to becoming recognized as quote-unquote evidence-based is extremely problematic. But here is the real tweet right here. Who benefits most from Suicide Prevention Month? <laughs> let's go with Jess again, and uh, let's just put you on screen. Um, I don't know. Um, I think a lot of people feel good. Um, I think there are some things, I think a lot of people feel good about like posting something on social media and being like, if you see something, say something. So I guess they benefit from it, um, if that's a benefit. And um, I do think there are some things that happen in lost survivor communities that are um, can be really helpful. Um, so I think there's, there's some stuff, there's some benefits. Um, for people, but I think those things could happen and do happen in other settings anyway. So, um, I don't know. Um, outside of that, I think that like organizations benefit a lot from fundraising. I mean, like this is the, like AFSP has all their big blocks right now and they bring in a, a lot of money from that, um, that, that they distribute however they want to do that. So, um, so probably financially some organizations benefit. Let's go to Desiree. Well, I was I was going to ask you to shit on um, AFSP, Jess, but that's... We'll, we'll, I we'll, 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 I'm not going to we'll, shit on AFSP. <laughs> Desiree. Let's just be clear. <laughs> she would, I mean, she took my answer. My answer was just going to be AFSP, so not shitting on it, just talking the truth. Um, what were we calling it? Uh, we were calling it Suicide Funding Month <laughs> recently. <laughs> Because that's what it is, and it would just be nice if there were more transparency around that. Because um, there's not that much funding, you know, but let's not pretend it's fucking shiny, happy people saving sad people's lives month, because it's not. We're all still dying. Well, what are all these big organizations raising millions of dollars? What are they doing with this money? I don't know. I can uh, tell you. Nice offices. <laughs> Uh, some research. Who's going to tell us? Was that Joelle? No, that was Danielle. Okay, well, let's go to Danielle, and then we'll get we'll get your answer for question number two. Um, I was actually part of an AFSP study, so I do want to say that this stuff does get used the way that we think it is. Did they put you in a lab? Were there like electrodes? I was actually at a hospital. Um, they were doing a study on people with um, complicated grief uh, uh, with suicide loss. And it was within the year after Eric had died by suicide. Um, they did scan my brain and there was a whole bunch of psych testing that they did. Um, where all that information is now and how it was utilized, you know, the bigger scheme of things, I couldn't tell you. But it was a, t a study funded by AFSP. 
Um, so I was glad to see that all the money that I raised for that organization went to some use. Um, I kind of did it because it was my first step in being like, I need to deal with this grief that I'm experiencing. Um, and let me go talk about it with some psychologists and in a hospital somewhere. Um, but I just going to answer the other question. I feel like, um, another place that benefits would be like hospitals because all of the awareness of like the resources that are available do come out during this time. And, um, I think that there's. A uh, big misconception, having worked in the inpatient domain, uh, people think that, um, you know, there's certain times of years where people think is highest for inpatient and it's not what people expect, but the awareness of the resources that are available come out during this month. So that is one benefit um, would be the hospitals. I feel like aside from the organizations, um, and just from working in a psychiatric hospital, I don't know about anyone else's experience, but in my experience, um, everyone's like, oh, it's during the holidays when you get the high, and it's absolutely not. I was so bored during Christmas last year. Um, so I don't know. I hope that I lost my train of thought. No worries. Let's go to now. Hudson. <laughs> Un unmute your mic, Hudson. I don't have a whole lot to add. I mean, I think everybody said it. I think, um, yeah, I mean, what was the question? <laughs> Who benefits right, most you. from suicide? You know, time. That's what I thought it was. Um, you know, I don't know. And I, I echoed some of the sentiments before. Um, I'll just add in the other piece of that, which is, um, you know, having done some of the walks before and having had family and friends do that and send messages of, you know, this helped or whatever. Um, I think that helps them, but I don't know that that's who benefits most. I don't really know who benefits most. Okay, let's go to Joelle. Um, yeah, I was trying, you know, I've been trying to think about this and I, I don't think I benefit from it, to be quite frank. Um, I, I really don't feel like I, I benefit all that much from Suicide Prevention Month. I think it's an incredibly stressful month. Um, I think that, you know, some, some of the groups that I identify with that have a very high um, risk of suicide just aren't even recognized, but that's personally. But in general, as somebody who experiences chronic suicidal thoughts, who, who has been at risk of suicide, I don't feel like I really benefit from Suicide Prevention Month. Um, I, I do think to, to some degree, um, uh, family members probably benefit some who can find a network and find some kind of closure, some kind of healing, and and I and it makes it like publicly more okay. Um, and I do think it increases funding, but ultimately, who who benefits the most? I'm not I'm not really sure. Now let's go to at anime mix mix. Whoa. <laughs> let's go to. Let's go to the Twitter chat. <laughs> Let's see what they have to say. Um, I don't get how you guys are able to like tweet and be at the live. That's like too much work. <laughs> um, and again, sorry if I'm not able to get to everyone. Like I love that I can't get to everyone. It's a good problem to have, but I want to let you know that I'm not trying to ignore you. Um, I appreciate Amber. I appreciate Roving Social Worker, who's one of our newer followers. Um, Leia says, I may be in the minority in that I am not sure how much more research we need. We tend to prioritize just one kind of research that just tells us more of the same kinds of things regarding risk factors. Hmm, you guys are always, uh, um, you all, you all, um, y'all gave me um, great ideas. Can for I chime in on that one? Um, yes, uh, I'll just be just, scrolling the screen just so people get seen. But yeah, go Hudson. Okay, yeah, I just want to chime in on that really fast. Um, part of the problem is is that it, it, when you submit grants to the NIH, it's it's like a small horse babysitting a large dog. Like, how does it work? How do you get money? What happens in the computer? Nobody knows. That was going to go. That's great. Um, so it, there's so much nonsensical uh, decision making. And like, I'm not going to get out my soapbox on this, but just the issue is not just that we need more research. I would argue that we do. It's that we need to um, approve projects that work and not just kind of give it that stepchild treatment, which I think so often it does. 
Um, the other thing I'll say is there's right. a ton of research out there coming out that's brand new on artificial intelligence, um, a whole bunch of shit. So just get your read on, it's really fun. I think also there's like a dearth of like user designed research and participatory action research and things like that in suicidology. Like the focus is on positivist psychology research that's very, very narrow in scope and does not include people with lived experience from its genesis. And that's never going to be good research until you do that. Okay, let's go to question number three. Question number three is, what are the potential negative results of censoring people's stories? And before I go around the table, um, just want to welcome anyone who's coming in a little late. Shame on you. But also, yay, you get to come and hang out with us for a couple minutes. Um, this is SPSM Chat. I'm Rudy Caceres at Rudy Caceres. Our special guests this week, Jess Stolman Rainey, Desiree L. Stage. They're awesome people. They also have a new podcast called Suicide and Stuff, and I'll let them plug their next episode and follow-up episodes as well at the end of the show i can't thank them enough we are critiquing suicide prevention month and back to the question question number three and as always reply to this tweet the tweet that's on the spsm chat twitter account or uh just use uh your own account i don't give a shit um a3 though just to make sure that i can put all the two and two together and use hashtag SPSM and feel free to respond as many times as you want until you get put into Twitter jail. So let's go to Des. Oh God, what the hell? Why are you gonna put me on the spot like that? <laughs> um, I was not ready. They're censoring people's stories. Like, uh, I don't know. I've worked with this a lot because I've done a lot with um, working on on reporting guidelines, and I think there's. I think there's value to um, to not, uh, not censoring, but editing a story down um, in terms of details when it comes to the way others might perceive it. But when it comes to, um, and, and that's in journalism, but when it comes to like telling your own story, I think, um, I think it's more about knowing your audience um, and some audiences maybe do need to hear more details than others, you know, like if you're, you're in a support group or something. Um, but I don't think other people should be telling us how to tell our stories. So I don't know, it's kind of complicated. Well, what is your reaction when people do try to censor your story? Um, you specifically? I think I've been doing this so long that I'm too busy censoring myself. Uh, and honestly, like, the parts of my story that would be gory are kind of boring um and the parts that people don't want to hear like the part about how the cops came and scared the shit out of me um and how i was treated in the hospital um you know that's that's whatever like i said people don't really want to hear about that but to me that's the part that is um that's that's harder harder to tell harder to live through yeah no i i can relate to that Jess, I feel like you have something to say about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, a few things. Well, so, okay. Um, our safe messaging guidelines were developed by, like, expert consensus. I'm sure I know who some of the experts were. Um, and I'm sure that people had really great intentions about that. But I think um, anytime we tell people that they have to tell their story in a way that validates or backs up, suicide prevention as a field, you are telling them there's only one good way or one appropriate way to be a survivor. And um, and it's like written explicitly in the guidelines that you should be telling your story in a way that's supportive of suicide prevention. And um, like, I gotta tell you, like suicide prevention fucking failed me. So to tell my story in a way that supports them is um, is just lying. And uh, And I spend a lot of time trying to tell my story in that way. And, and people didn't really care when I was telling my story that way. Nobody wanted to listen to it, um, actually. Um, but when I started telling my story in a more, like, truthful and, like, holistic way that talked about the things that actually happened, I think people um, care more. Um, I do think it's helpful to tell our stories um, to facilitate, like, movement as opposed to just, like, 
I don't know, just for the purpose of sharing, although I think there's benefits to just sharing stories as well. Let's go to Hudson. Um, I've actually been having this discussion a lot lately with people trying to encourage them to tell their stories and things. And this is where I land on it. The right way to tell your story is the way you want to tell it. Full stop. That is it. Like, if I'm going to be offended by a way you tell a story, then I'm making your story about me and not you. So the right way to tell your story is exactly the way that you want to tell it that feels good, that feels uh, comfortable, that feels safe. That's how to tell it. Let's go to Danielle. So I have, uh, have to agree with Des here. When I, w I just was trying to like tweet what you were saying and um, as you were saying it, and I think I just kind of failed there. But I do agree that like you have to tell your story the way that you see fit. No one else can tell your story for you. And only you know what should and should not be censored. I know that there are a lot of people who are really um, like invasive. I know that there have been times when I've got up and publicly shared about my story or story about, you know, Eric's suicide. And they ask these really, really personal questions. I don't feel all the time that the methods that I've used are necessary to tell anybody because I don't think anyone needs to take, um, I don't think anyone needs to take what I've experienced and then go and try it themselves. And that's one really big problem I have with reporting in the media because there are copycat suicides um, for people who are just, you know, temporarily having a bad time. And they, I mean, there's just, there's just so many issues with that. But I think that we have to tell our stories the way that we tell our stories because if we tell it any other way, it's it's not being, I don't know the word. I don't know the word that I'm looking for, but we have to be true to ourselves and what we've been through. There's somebody out there who's listening to what we're saying, who's experienced that low point that we've been in and what we talk about and how we got through those points might be exactly what they need to hear to save their own life. So I don't think censoring is good. I don't ready? think you ready? the details either, but... No, that's that's okay. totally fine. We're all we're all trying to figure it out, Danielle. So you you ready, Joelle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I I really think uh, as has been mentioned, kind of know your audience, but also really be genuine and and true to yourself and how you want to tell your story. Uh oh. Hold on. Um, Joelle is breaking up. So let's, uh, while Joelle gets her uh, stuff together, let's go to the uh, Twitter chat. And hey, Ashley, how are you? Um, I believe you're commenting on Periscope, uh, which we're also streaming on. So shout out to the Periscope people. So let's go up the uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, Drew Voris says, this is the answer. This is the uh, question too, but let's give him a shout out. Regarding the benefits of Suicide Prevention Month, there are lots of conversations, programs, and walks aimed to raise awareness of suicide and mental health. Ultimately, I feel cramming this into one month is overwhelming and should be a focus year round. Um, Amber says, well, definitely censor how they try to die. Why give people ideas or tips? Hmm. Um, Jess has shared a piece that she read in Madden America. So hopefully Krista can retweet that from the SPSM chat account. Um, Leia says to question number three, I think we have fought for a while for it to be okay to say that we are still suicidal at times versus permanently cured of all suicidality. That alone feels like a victory. Um, Amber says, oh, good God, but if you're still suicidal at times, then you are not, quote unquote, cured, like it's supposed to stop or something. Um, Des says, I'll just be over here standing the perfect amount of salt and pepper and mental strategies hair. Awesome. That's that's what we're here for. Um, tell your story with your own voice. Rattle the SAR says, why should we censor methods? Main safety is an important part of prevention and people need to be aware of dangers, especially guns. People are shocked by stats about suicides with guns because no one talks about it. Why is it so taboo to talk about methods? Okay, so let's see if Joelle is back. Um, she is not. So um, anyone have any other thoughts on question number three before we move on to question number four? With, with the methods thing, I, I feel like that was a personal choice I made every single time I stand up and talk about my suicide experiences. Um, and I see that it is pissing a couple of people off here on Twitter. Um, 
I'm not going to sit there and tell people like, hey, this is the type of pill I used or this is the size of the blade that I used to slit my wrists. Um, because I feel like those are important things. That, I mean, those are not important things. It's the story of how I overcame those feelings that I want to impart on people, not the tools that I used. And I just, I see like a, a few tweets here being like methods, you know, why not talk about the methods? Um, if that's something that you feel comfortable doing, I encourage you to do that. That's just a personal choice I made. And I'm sure if any of the other people in this, you know, little video here censored that out of their story too, that's probably a personal choice. I'm not telling other people not to speak about the methods if that's what they feel comfortable about. So I just felt the need to clarify that. There's a okay. difference between mentioning your method and going into detail about it. And I think, I think like with the recommendations, um, we tend to go, uh, we tend to go to the, to the extremities. It's like some people want to talk about it and they want to talk about all the terrible things that happen along with it. And then the recommendations are like, don't say it at all. But if you ever work with reporters, they're going to tell you they're going to pull the story because if you don't want to talk about your method, that's non-disclosure. So there's got to be a happy medium. So I can say, yeah, I tried to slip my wrists and I used some pills and, and that's enough. Like I don't need to paint a fucking picture about it. Okay. Let's go to Joelle who's hopefully here to stay. Am I good? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was saying, I think that, it, you know, if you want to tell your story, you should tell your story, um, how it's like, how it organically comes from you and how it's true to you, because that's, that's really how you're genuinely um, telling your narrative. If you're censoring it, it's not really your narrative. It's, it's other people um, influencing the message you're sending. It's not really entirely your story. Um, and I, I agree with the other, other people who have said, like, know your audience and really um, to a degree, I think it is appropriate to let people know somewhat what kind of material they're going to be hearing because people should have the opportunity to prepare themselves for what they're going to be hearing um, and make the choice to, to um, choose to hear it or not. But I don't think we should be censoring ourselves. And I think to say that we need to censor ourselves um, really says that like what we go through is just like appalling and other people can't bear to hear it, but like we should constantly experience it and hold it within ourselves and we deserve that and nobody else can bear to support us or understand what we're going through. And it's, it's just fucked up. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I love all the answers we're getting. Like this could easily be a two, three hour SPSM chat, but we got to get to question number four. That's the last question. And we'll go into final thoughts and we can just uh, come back to topics that we want to ask more about, talk more about. So hang tight. Question number four, the final question. How can we improve next year's suicide prevention month? Let's go to Danielle. Um, why not make it a year long thing and talk about uncomfortable things such as suicide all the time, be present to the people in your lives, pay attention. I feel like I've lost friends to suicide and the things that I would have done differently was to notice that there was changes in their behaviors and that they gave warning signs that weren't necessarily, you know, what AFSP or any other website says to look for. I know through my attempts. I didn't give stuff away. I didn't talk about suicide all the time. I, I made a plan in my head and I executed it. And thankfully I failed because I'm here now. Um, <laughs> but I think that this needs to be an ongoing conversation, um, not just specifically one month or one week or one day of the year. Just let's just do better by being present and talking about it all the time. Let's make each other fucking uncomfortable. What say you? Desiree Al stage. Unmute your mic. Ah, unmute it. Um, yeah, I just I feel like if if it's gonna be um, if it's gonna be a fundraising thing, let's be transparent about how we need to raise funds for whatever programs we're running without exploiting other people's stories. Um, I feel like we need to avoid the pressure of. Um, constantly putting out content that isn't new it isn't helpful um there's a lot of like push for, for 
for content right now and it's it's we're just getting quantity and, and not really quality and it's the same old bullshit and it's coming from the same channels um i think i, I read somewhere that uh the only people who this is actually who are who are even really responding to suicide prevention month are people in the field um and, and that should say something you know that that means we're not doing it right so i think we need to start asking the people who we um are intending to help well let me ask you desiree what's what's a good piece of suicide prevention content that you've seen either this year or in recent months whenever it feels relevant i don't know i i kind of suck i'm not i'm not great at putting my content out consistently or um you know, on, on any kind of schedule, I put it out when it feels right, when there's a story that makes sense, or when um, I've got a new story to publish on the Live Through This site, or when we're having a good conversation. You know, I don't, I don't know, I just do it when it makes sense, rather than feeling like, oh, well, you know, people are using the internet the most on Mondays at 2 p.m., so I'm gonna make sure I get something out there then. Okay, fair enough. Let's go to Jess Stolman Rainey. Yeah, I think um, if we could make Suicide Prevention Month more about building lives that we want to live and not about like uh, coercion and control in the moment, that would be cool. Um, I put in the Twitter feed also, um, I'll shout out um, some friends at Western Mass RLC because they do some really great work um, and they um, posted some stuff about um proposing that we re reclaim the month of September as alternatives to suicide month instead of um, suicide prevention month because of some of the problems. Um, and um, I think you should just go ahead and check out, there's a link in there, check that out and see um, if that might be something that you're more interested in too. Well, what are some alternatives to suicide that you recommend? I mean, there's, I mean, there's hundreds of alternatives to suicide, but the most important ones are the ones that work for you, right? Um, so it's really about shifting the focus, um, from, uh, coercion and control, like controlling someone in the moment and assessing people to, um, having conversations with people that, um, expand their options. Okay. Let's, are you, are you there Hudson? Hi. Awesome. Um, so I echo what the other two people said, um, I agree with that. Um, I think the thing that I want to add in, because it was my experience last year, was I'd like to see some of the really, really large corporations that have nothing to do with mental health um, start to do stuff during this month. Um, you know, I worked on a big project where we got a bunch of investment on how to do data anonymization and mental health from a big company that didn't have to do it um, last year. And I think that's great. I think I want to see more uh, organizations doing, um, not just donating. Let's go to Joel. Um, sorry, I blanked out on the question for a second. Um, how can we prove next year's suicide prevention month? I think that there's a lot of activities that are, um, labeling themselves as awareness, awareness for the need for, for prevention. And they're really flashy and it's really gross. Um, there, you know, some, some of the things that are walks they're to raise money. And I think, I think they need to be more, um, as somebody said, transparent about what they're raising money for. Um, you know, is it, is it for awareness, but what is awareness really? Does that, is that actually helping people? Um, and I, I really think we need to concentrate more on the surrounding factors and, um, like the upstream prevention, you know, there's so much that goes into um, suicide and what ends up, what ends up with a person taking their life. And it's not just mental illness and it's not just the short time beforehand. It's all these other factors and, and we can't just, um, just be looking at that endpoint. Let's see what the Twitter chat has to say, and then we'll take it home with final thoughts. Do to do, do to do. Thank you, everyone. I, lo I especially love the new people. Share with all your friends. Tell them what it's about. It's what the cool kids are doing. Um, Roving social worker says, "What I'm hearing a lot tonight is there is performative discussion, and then there is the authentic story of suicide, whether it's dots or attempts." 
Um, Lena says to question number three, I think as a sibling suicide law survivor who works in suicide prevention, I often find myself censoring the things I say to myself to survive my grief that do not align with mainstream um, suicide prevention messages that focus on hope and all suicide is preventable phrases. Um, Desiree says uh, to uh, replying to Rattle the Stars, depends on what you mean by talking about methods, stance and impact are different from details about what kind of gun, how many bullets, where you aimed it, blood, etc. I think audience is important. Some people can't deal with details. Some can. Amber Cannon said, well, let's see. Methods is one thing. How many pills and what kind of pills is another? Um Amber says, let's talk about how we survived, how we connected with people, get control of our finances, seek the help we needed, got the help we needed. Laurel, how are you? I think there's a difference between information and imagery, with the former being acceptable and the latter being extremely problematic. Uh, Krista says, lay off the pressure, make this one month only, one month not be the only time people are willing to talk about suicide. Be considerate of how this affects people. Recognize that burnout is a real thing. Um, hello, Youth Mental Health Canada. Glad you can join us. I know it's late over there. As a partner suicide loss survivor, I agree with you. Some issues I don't discuss publicly. It took a lot to deal with the guilt, grief, loss to get acceptance of his decision. I do so much active work in suicide prevention, so acceptance seems counter to that. Um, Jess and Desiree, multitasking, roving social workers, says fucking yes to what Amber has to say. Um, Laurel says, uh, replying to Desiree, it is, but man, have I read some really gruesome descriptions. That college athlete who jumped off the parking lot sticks to my mind. It was years ago when I still vividly remember it, and I'm sure most people in the field know exactly what I'm referring to. Um, and just want to just, I know we have like a lot of tweets going on, so I just want to just scroll up kind of fast just to make sure people get seen. Um, thank you so much, Ashley J. Glad you found us. Please come back. Hey, Valerie, how are you doing? Hey, Danielle, how are you? How are you, Danielle? And again, hey, Youth Mental Health Canada. Um, sorry I couldn't get to everyone, but uh, I appreciate all of them. And we try to retweet uh, almost everything that we see from the main account. So let's bring it home. Let's go to final thoughts. And we are going to go with Desiree. Still muted. Unmuted. Hey. Uh, my final thoughts are that I'm ready for it to be October. Um, and I just really want, I don't know, I want the suicide prevention field to get down with critical suicidology a little more. I think we need to, um, really be considering what, what makes us want to live, what makes people want to live rather than, um, how we're going to force them to live when they're not in a place where they feel like they should be living. Um, so yeah, I want to see that happening. That's that's it. I don't feel good. Have you have you been playing that Green Day song lately? No. Wake I, me up when September ends. No. <laughs> I haven't played Green Day since I was in sixth grade. Oh, you're missing out. Let's go with Jess, who's laughing, <laughs> <laughs> laughing oh, at suicide man. prevention. Rudy, Rudy's, no. got that, Rudy's got that one on repeat. Like that's just that's a CD player. Uh, Very repeat. emotional song. <sighs> Very emotional. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, final thoughts are that, um, you know, suicide prevention month can also just be like what we make it and, um, we don't have to all buy into like the fuckery. Um, so you can do it differently. <laughs> um, so, uh, we had a, like, there were lots of suggestions in the Twitter feed that I thought were excellent, like including more diverse voices or voices and, people with chronic uh, suicidal thoughts and things like that. Um, I think we need to put pressure on the field to be different and better. Um, and, and it doesn't respond well to that. So the more of us that are doing it, the less, you know, pushback one person gets when they are, um, they are being critical. So everyone do that. And not just of researchers, but also of your organizations locally, because um, they're perpetuating the same shit too. What letter grade would you give this Suicide Prevention Month, Jess? F minus. <laughs> that's, that's a start. You can only go uphill from there. Let's go with Danielle. Final thoughts. Um, I hate September now. I hate that Green Day song. 
I'm born in September, so I shouldn't hate this month. But do you these, like the Earth, Wind, and Fire song better? No, no. Well, <laughs> if you can find me like a metal September song, then maybe we can have this discussion again. But no, just no, lots of no. Um, but I don't know. There was something that just really pissed me off about Suicide Prevention Month this this year. Like I just didn't want to partake in it at all. And maybe this is going to be like more of a therapist answer here. But I just feel like we can all do better as individuals. And like I said, I just I want people to keep pushing the boundaries and having the uncomfortable conversations. Like I've told my friends, don't be afraid to ask me if I'm feeling suicidal, because if I am feeling suicidal, you're not placing the thoughts in my head by asking the question. Um, and I just feel like we need to just be better to each other because it sucks feeling alone, especially when you want to die. And sometimes it just is that simple having someone next to you not knowing the right things to do not saying the right things but just actually being there that kind of gives you even if it's like that much more motivation to keep going so i think everyone should just stop being shitheads and talk about suicide all the time and that's that's my final thought love you guys or, or just sunday <laughs> evenings what say you mental strategy uh you know i really liked uh suicide and stuff's invite where I, it came out and it was like do you want to like suicide and stuff uh, I laughed about that for a couple of days. Um, I, you know, I guess here's the thing: like suicide prevention awareness uh, month, raising things. Um, just make it about you. Make it about what you want. Um, tell your stories. Um, find something that makes you happy. Hamlet is very excited to see everybody today. It's getting so big. Uh -huh. Such a big boy. Um, find things that bring joy out there and um when it comes to prevention month if you want to donate donate to somewhere you know is doing the work uh your crisis hotlines um there's a bunch of places i'm sure that sbsm we could tweet out different places where they're doing the field work and doing the things to save lives um then you know your money's going right where you want it donate to live through this hey donate to live through this this is the official pig of live through that <laughs> i'll take it i love official pigs Yes, let's go to let's go to to uh, Joelle. That's your name. There we go. <laughs> I don't know my name. Um, I huh? think <laughs> um, I think uh, last week I said you know um, when we were talking about telling our own stories that anytime you tell your story genuinely, um, somebody is going to see it as a challenge to what they think they know, and um, I think that to make a better suicide prevention month, we need to we as a collective um, need to stop seeing that as a challenge to what we know and see it more as an invitation to what we know. And that, you know, definitely includes providers. It includes family members. It includes anybody who wants to actually help address the problem. It's, <laughs> it's um, an invitation to get more information, to get in, get more ways to support people and change the outcomes. Um, and, we need to stop forcing people to accept things that aren't actually going to help them or that they don't want. Final thoughts, anime. I agree. <laughs> okay. So before we take it home, I want to make sure that Des I and I want to make sure Des and Jess can talk about their new podcast, suicide and muff. So Des and Jess, what's going on? <laughs> Tell us what's going on with the podcast. You said it on the Twitter. Um, well, Suicide and Muff is the after hours version. Yeah. Of yeah. Suicide and stuff. Um, but the regular hours version <laughs> is, uh, whoa, I can't even talk about it now. Um, so the regular hours version is like me and Jazz, and then now some guests. And um, we talk about our complaints, mostly. Um, really, we wanted to bring attention to things that don't get discussed um, very often about suicide. So, um, yeah, our first episode was about a million things. It was just like, file your complaints here. And then... Um, <laughs> Is that where the beef was born? That's where the beef yeah. was born. Um, and yeah, then... Beef, not pork, you're fine. <laughs> and then our second episode um, had a little more focus. And um, on Tuesday, actually, we have Chris Maxwell coming on. And we're going to talk about something that came up tonight, which is 
following the money in suicide prevention. Like, where does that money actually go? Um, because I think a lot of people don't know first how to access that information and then what it means. So, yeah. And then after that, I think that the episode after that, we will also have Chris Maxwell again, and we're going to talk about suicide and film and TV. I get to talk about ritual suicide finally. Finally. Where finally. can we find it? Where can you find it? On Facebook, um, Suicide and Stuff. Uh, we're also we on Twitter, like Suicide, suicide and Stuff. Like suicide and Stuff. Yeah, just like Suicide and Stuff. You know, yeah. that's what you got to do. Um, I don't have the website set up yet, but I'm also archiving uh, episodes on YouTube. So slowly working its mm -hmm. way into the world. What if it's, uh, are you going to put it on CompuServe too? AOL 3.0. <laughs> Yes. Oh my Put God. That we disc need in. a crickets button. We need a crickets button for Green Day jokes. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank, thank you so much, Des and Jess. I'm glad you didn't give every answer your mom to all the questions that we had. Um, I really appreciate you. Um, You're lucky. You're lucky she didn't do that. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? You really are lucky. I didn't do that. <laughs> okay. All right. We're, we're officially going into overtime. So I want to make sure that I give a shout out to Kimya and Dennis, Dr. Kimya and Dennis, who's going to be our guest next Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, That's 9 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time. That's going to kick ass. She's going to be awesome. I haven't talked to her at all. Only exchanged a couple emails. So I'm really excited to have her on and see her to uh, do good stuff. <laughs> so that is next Sunday, September 29th. Let's give some more last minute shout outs. Um, Evil Robert wants to see Geo Cities. Okay, we'll make it happen. If you want to pay for that hosting, uh, Evil Robert, go for it. So that's going to do it. Everyone wave goodbye to the Twitterverse. Uh, this is also going on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel and sbsmchat.com. That's going to do it until next week. Until next week. Okay. Hold your piggies close. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs>